Hi everyone, this is Tom Lukman and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to uh, randomly move objects on your scene using a simple Python script and how to give each single object, in individual object, a random color uh, which is the feature many people asked me about when they saw this image. So, let's start. Uh, I will go back to my 3D view and which is actually the new scene what you should be seeing if you open up your new scene in Blender with the default settings and uh, so first thing I'm going to do is delete all the junk I don't need which is the cube and uh, the lamp and I'm gonna start by adding a, so shift A to add a mesh a cylinder and before you do anything else, we will set the number of vertices to 6 and radius to 0.2. Depth of 2, default depth is fine, and cap fill type and or all other options are okay. So leave it to that. And we're going to. The default name is fine. And now I'm going to press 7 to go to the top view and press 5 to see the orthographic view. And by scrolling my mouse, I'm zooming in. Uh, now before I do anything else, I'm going to rotate this by hitting R and holding the control key. I'm going to rotate it by 30, minus 30 degrees. Uh, you can see the number below. So if I undo this right now and just rotate, hold control in the bottom left corner, you should see rot minus 30. Then just confirm it by clicking. Or alternatively, you can just put rotation 30 here and be done with it. Now before you do anything else, because next thing we're going to do is use the array modifiers, make sure to control A and apply rotation and scale. When I first did my image I had some weird results with the array modifiers and it was because for some reason my scale wasn't 1 1 1 here as I have here on the end panel. If you don't have this panel on just push N to turn it on and off or here under the view it's here properties it's actually called property panel but popularly we call it end panel because of the end shortcut now I'm going to go here to the modifiers tab now add modifier and add an array what this did is it made one copy of my original object to one unit to the, to the right uh, I'm going to actually use a constant offset and I'm going to go into the minus like this and a little bit down on the Y axis so just below the red line here and ooh, maybe yeah, like so and the distance isn't important, you can pick whatever distance you want um, and you can al always tweak it later and now that after that I've done this, I'm going to just close minimize this modifier, I'm going to add another one there, go back to constant offset again and I'll just move it on the Y axis to go below my yeah, something like this uh, if you get uh, weird results like this, it's or it's because you're in perspective view, so make sure to do it in orthographic view so that you see precisely where you placed your objects. Okay, that being done, we can now zoom out quite a bit and just add, uh, I don't know, add about 30 objects to the side for start and 30 objects to the bottom. Now we have to place this object so that they are all in the camera view. Now, first of all, since we seem to be going down, I'm going to press R to rotate and just minus 90 degrees to get a nice 90 degree rotation. Again, if you're not comfortable with shortcuts, you can just hit 90 here or plus 90 or whatever. Now on the top view, uh, I will go here to view, align view, align active camera to view. 
or uh, control alt number pad 0 but uh, this shortcut is different on Macs and Linux systems I'm going to select the camera zoom it click the middle mouse button and zoom it in like so and now I'm going to get uh, grab my objects and just try to place them to fill the entire camera view obviously I don't have enough arrays so I'm just going to add more so this one lucky guess Tom there you go now I'm happy you do want some objects around your camera border some more of them just to get better lighting later on and this is basically it uh, for the first first part of the tutorial this is now a good uh, time to save your file because if you don't I'm just gonna overwrite and hold on because uh, we are now going to apply those modifiers and if you don't have anything if you don't have this saved uh, you might regret it later on maybe if you for some example want more space between them or something like this so anyway we have now saved this and we can go ahead and apply the modifiers now what I got now is a big object with many individuals separated objects and this is uh, not what I want because I want to move each and every individual part separately so we are going to have to separate these parts first so by going here uh, by just by pressing the P button we will get the separate menu and separate it by loose parts so each of these uh, cylinders is a loose part it's not connected to the other one so Blender will now s be able to successfully separate them all it's gonna take a while uh, as you can see okay there we go it's now done and now we have if you take a look on our viewer here you can see that we have Oh, like over a thousand, ooh, over sixteen hundred cylinders. Nice. So uh, there is uh, now one problem with them. If I go to top, if you go to uh, the orthographic top view, you will notice that they all have the origin point on the same place on this first object. Now this is not quite what we want. In order to keep things neat, we want our origin point to be in the center of each object so now with each of these now with every object selected okay in case you deselected some of them already by accident just hit uh, go back to object oh sorry my mistake we have to go to back to object mode and now we can, by hitting A we can select them or deselect them all now your camera is gonna get in the way so so over here in the outliner just click on this little arrow and you won't be able to select your camera anymore so now with, by hitting A we can select all the select all and in object uh, we can uh, where is it origin I never know where it is so I'm going just going to hit spacebar whenever it not, can't find anything just type it here origin so set origin and origin to geometry and now this will fix our little origin points if I zoom in here so origins are in the middle of their own objects and they are now fixed and now we can go uh, start playing with Python uh, there's no need to save yet so I'm going to just make some space for programming by clicking, right clicking on the line here, I'm going to split the area. Ah, not like this. Actually, over here, split the area here. And turn this into the text editor. I will stretch this out a little bit and turn this bottom one into the Python console. So, if you've never used Python in Blender before, this thing is actually quite 
uh, fun because you can give Blender direct commands by typing some Python stuff. Uh, for example, it's a nice calculator. If you just type 10 plus 10, it will return 20. So whenever you need to calculate something, you don't need to grab your cal calculator. Just use this Python console. Uh, so uh, now I wrote a simple script that uh, moves objects along the along the z-axis randomly, all selected objects. Now I'm not gonna go uh, write a new one right now during this tutorial. I'm just going to uh, open up one of my old files and I'll paste and I will just paste uh, the code here. But before I can do that, I need to click on new and now I'm going to copy paste from another file and I'll play a pause recording while I do this. Okay, now I've pasted my small script into it. Uh, you can find this script uh, on in the text below this video. So you can copy paste it from there uh, on my website. If you're watching on YouTube, I will... Well, I guess I'll include it under the YouTube video too, but I always recommend you watch... Uh, check out the the video on my website too so you can get because uh, I always place uh, post other materials related to tutorials there okay so uh, now that I've uh, now I'm assuming you've done the same thing copy pasted my my little script into your blender file uh, before we do anything else I recommend you click on these three buttons here because they will, when you do, whenever you do scripting and programming, they will give you a line number and paint your script a little bit, so you can see the differences between Blender commands, uh, Python commands, and variables and stuff. So, okay. So what is this thing here? Import BPI. Uh, BPI is basically a, a module of uh, Python. Uh, Blender related Python stuff. So when you import BPI, you basically tell Blender, uh, tell Python to interact with uh, with all the, on the all everything there is in Blender. So by importing BPI, I get access to all my Blender objects, Blender GUI, materials, everything. Uh, the next line from random import everything. Asterisk means everything. Uh, this is just uh, telling Python to import uh, another module called random, which will give us access to a random number. A random number is basically just telling your computer to make some number up. Uh, for example, if I uh, import, if I do this thing here, so from random import everything. And now I just type random and brackets. Blender is going to, whenever I do this, Blender is just going to return me a random number. And this number is going to be be between uh, 0, 0.0 and 1.0, uh, which is basically perfect for us because uh, what I want to do is move those objects along the z axis for that amount. So in order to do that, I wrote a little for script here, uh, a for loop actually, uh, which tells Blender to for every uh, everything that is in BPI context selected objects. So BPI context selected objects is basically a variable, a function that will return a list of every object we have selected on our scene. So if I put this here in the console you will see that Blender is now returning the names of each of our cylinders here. Every single one, which, because I have all of them selected. So, uh, this uh, the for loop I have over here, tell, you know, in line 4, tells Blender that for each OB, OB is, you can put whatever you want, uh, it's a variable, so for for each object, that I have selected for each and every object, so it's location.z, so uh, it's a z 
location, which is now uh, I think zero, yeah, has to be in be increased uh, by a random by a random number multiplied by two. Well, that means uh, so, like I told you, it's zero point zero between zero point. Uh, and 1 and I figured that I wanted to move these objects between 0 and 2 so this is why I'm multiplying the random number by 2 to get a value between 0 and uh, 2.0 so if uh, if you want uh, less movement uh, change this number to something less whatever you want or if we want even more movement increase it and if you change this z uh, with x or uh, y, you will change the axis that you're touching, messing with. But in this particular case, we want it to be z, and this is so we're going to stick to z. Actually, uh, I just noticed that I didn't even have to use this. I could have just used random multiplied by, like basically like this. Because uh, right now our location is zero, so it's always going to be zero plus random whatever. So we can even make it shorter. Okay, I hope that wasn't too much of uh, uh, me going blah blah blah, and it was clear. And now, before we actually run this script, I recommend you save, uh, save again. Because if something goes wrong uh, with your script, uh, I don't think you can undo it easily. Well, you could set every uh, or every object Z location to zero, but you know, better safe than sorry. So after we've saved our file, uh, to make this thing work even quicker, I'm going from this camera view. I'm going to first use B and box select objects that are outside my camera view and I will just hit delete and delete them on both sides yeah there you go because we don't want too many objects that we can't see outside the scene just speed up our rendering and this is it now this being done remember you need to have your object selected and run the script voila there we go uh, if I rotate this, you can see that each and every object now has, or if you just select them and watch the Z variable here, each object has a different Z position, which is what we basically wanted. Okay, so if you made it this far, now comes the hard part. How to render this? Uh, if you haven't already, switch to cycles, because the example only works in cycles. And we don't need the Python console anymore, so I'm going to join by right-clicking. I'm going to join these two areas and switch these to the Node Editor. And before I start working on my materials, I'm going to do a very simple lighting setup by using an environment map. Um, so go to the World Settings, use Nodes, Background, here Environment Texture, Equi Rectangular, Open. And I'm going to open uh, a studio lighting HDR equirectangular image that I've got. Um, I'm going to give you guys, uh, under this video, I'm going to give you a link where you can download this. Because it's uh, this one and several other uh, maps are actually being given away free. For free. Um, so yeah, you should use them. Uh, you don't have to do this step, you can make your own lighting, but just like put some lights on the side, like here and maybe here, just to get like two different light sources, or just play with your lights to get something you like. It's really up to you. I'm going to go use this environment map, and before I can do that, I'm just going to go to my settings, select multiple important sample here uh, this will help get rid of the noise and I'll just increase it to 1024 it's what I want to it's what I 
find works really well with this studio light and I already know uh, that I if that I should increase the setting to like 1.3 but if you're doing your own lighting you will have your own setup so uh, there we go uh, this being done I can now s I'll just save just in case we have an explosion here uh, I'll set this to rendered there we go so we can see what's going on and I'm going to change back to the node editor here uh, I'll select one cylinder doesn't matter which one and I'll just give it a new material I'll just call it whatever random and uh, before I do anything else I'm going to select all of my objects so AA and I'm going to go here on object and I'm going to link those materials so make links or control L is the shortcut and make sure to link materials uh, so now that each and every object has the same material so if we change one material everything changes okay so we're going to make uh, to, uh, we're going to go back to the rendered view so you can see what I'm doing and now I'm going to on top of this diffuse shader I'm going to add a simple glossy shader and mix this in so add a mix shader Zoop, and uh, plug the glossy on the bottom and when it's plugged in the bottom the more I pull the factor to the uh, to the left, the less gloss effect I get. If I go to the factor of 1, it's all glossy. And I'm just going to s give it a tiny little amount of gloss of so 0.05 just so that it's a s diffused BSDF shader only because every object in the world has just has at least a tiny amount of gloss and this is what we've got here now you are of course welcome to experiment and come up with your, your own results uh, and I'll use Beckham I'm kinda used to Beckham and now I'm going to add a color hue saturation node here which I'm going to plug in to the color, color factor now what this hue saturation value node does is it basically lets me control the color I want so let's say I want these things to be red uh, the value is basically how bright your color is the closer this value is to zero the closer it is to black and saturation is how intense your color is so as I increase it you will get you will see that my red becomes redder and hue is basically a color of your color wheel being picked now what do these values have in common and why did I choose this uh, if you remember our random example random is a number between 0 and 1 and these values are always between 0 and 1 as well and for those that didn't know over here in the input uh, object info we can actually get a random number so if I put this object info random number and plug it into hue I will get a random color with a uh, saturation that I pick here and the value that I pick here I can so I could just make a really crazy scene by messing everything up by plugging this into every <laughs> every factor that there is and this is how you get your random colors now obviously if you leave it like this or anything or even if you just uh, use the random hue I don't know about you but if I had a background like this it's like too many colors so instead of uh, choosing a random color for my uh, blue render that you saw I actually plugged this random factor into the value and if I change my color here to blue you will get what I had in my original render so something between black and bright and blue 
So pick your favorite color. Uh, I guess I'll stick to red for this one and you can go with your such. I don't rec generally recommend that you go full one here. At least go like 0.98 as a maximum because nothing in nature is uh, you know, completely red or completely white or completely black. These are just artificial colors. So. I mean, that's how I do it. And this is pretty much it for this tutorial. In order to render this, uh, since there is an obvious uh, gray hole in the in the uh, in the background, I just uh, added uh, a plane, scaled it up along uh, this, and then scaled it up along the x-axis. Uh, gave it a new material and just made it a uh, diffuse 100% blue color. I mean, I know I said that nothing is that way, but yeah, we don't really need this black anyway. So, and this is pretty much it. Go back to your camera view. Uh, for my a uh, rendering scene uh, I can already tell you that um, first uh, about 500 samples will be enough to get rid of noise uh, for performance purposes you can turn off reflective caustics and refractive caustics or if you have an older version of blender you have the no caustics option here you can turn it off because we don't need it in the scene and since I'm going to render this out on a CPU, I'm going to put it 16 by 16. And that's pretty much all the tips I can give you here. So, I'm going to pause this recording and give it a render. Okay, rendering is done. I actually cheated and rendered it on my GPU, but yeah, it doesn't matter. So, here we have our result. This is it. And... Um, for your own image, I encourage you to experiment with different shapes, maybe different color types, maybe different perspective. Turn your camera, make it move between those columns. I don't know. It's up to your imaginations. You can use maybe less vertices here, if, like I said, different shapes and stuff. Anyway, thank you for watching and once more uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, go to my website, the link is under the video and uh, because uh, scripts and uh, maybe some shader screenshots and extra explanations will be posted there. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this and see you next time. Bye bye.